So in the last game jam I did, I came up with this really simple typing text dialogue system. And I thought I would pull that out and just show you the code for that because it is really simple. It just takes a label and two timers. And I think it works really well. So here's the code. I'll just show you all that first. It's only, it's less than 50 lines long. I just have a node 2D that I call dialog. And this becomes the dialog scene, which will be spawned with uh, an object and so that it appears above its head or you can spawn it at the bottom. You can do whatever you want with it, but I would recommend keeping your dialog code in a separate scene so you can spawn it wherever you want it. There's a label, which I start out, it's blank text. I just have the text centered align via line and then I added a custom font down here a dynamic font but it, it does start as empty and then I have two timers so I call one of them next character and next message the next character timer is responsible for the typing itself the next message will be used uh, basically whenever the first message finishes then we pause for a little bit of time and then we move on to the second message so I called it read time so we have typing speed and read time. The typing speed is 0.1, the read time's two. So if I run this one more time, it types out at 0.1 seconds per each letter and then it pauses for two seconds and then it moves on to the second message. Second message for you. So those are important. Oh, also here are the messages. So I have the messages in a list. My first message is represented by the index zero and that's why this value, current message, starts at zero. We're saying our first message is zero, and then from there we'll just increment up by one. Display is the value that I'll be using to add characters to, and then displaying that within the label. So I'm basically going to take this value, and whatever that's equal to, I'm going to set the label's text to that display. And then current character just keeps up with where we're at in each individual message, so that when we get to the end, we know it's time to move on to the next message. So ready is pretty easy. I just call start dialog. For start dialog I do kind of what I did at the beginning I just set everything to zero set this to blank set this to zero and then I grab that first next character timer and I set the wait time to typing speed and then I start the timer the reason I have this in its own function is because I want a way for characters or NPCs or whoever to be able to spawn a dialog object and be able to call start dialog on their own so they'll, they'll create it They'll set the messages for their own text, and then they'll call start dialog. I also have stop dialog, which just deletes the dialog node or scene from from its parent. I guess I should also add in the stop dialog. I should probably add get parent uh, dot remove child self. I should probably add that if it's the child of something. So we'll we'll leave that in there as a comment. The timer functions are very simple as well. So the next character, we're going to do two things. If the current character is less than the length of the current message, we're using that current message value to grab the current message from the messages list. If current character is less than that, then we need to grab the next character by grabbing the current message and then using the current character. So basically we can treat this string as like its own list where each character is a value. So this has an index of zero, the Y has an index of one, the space has an index of two, and that's how we're accessing this list. It's like a two-dimensional list, I guess, or three-dimensional, multi-level list. Uh, and then we just add the next character to the display. The display value, and then, yeah, we take the label.text, and we set it equal to the display, whatever the display is equal to. So we're just incrementally adding characters. And then the most important thing is to remember to increment the current character. If the current character is greater than or equal to the length of the current message, then we need to stop the next current character timer, and we're going to initiate that next timer, next message timer. So we, we do need it to be one shot. One shot essentially means the timer is not going to repeat every two seconds. It's just one time, two seconds, when it goes off, it calls this function, and then it kind of kills itself. So one shot, we set the wait time to the read time that we set at the top. And then we call start again, which can be easy to forget sometimes. This function is even simpler if the current message is equal to length of the message is minus one. And the reason we have to do that is because if current message, basically the length of this list is two, but this second value, the final value in this list is actually has an index of one. So it will, it will be equal to the length of the message is minus one. If that's true, then we stop the dialogue, which just means delete the scene. 
But if it's not true, then we increment the current message, we reset the display to nothing, and we reset current character to zero because we're about to start on the next message. And then we have to remember to start back the next character timer, which stopped up here. So that's a, that's a really quick look at a, what I think is a very simple dialogue system. I'll run it one more time just so you can see it. And then if you wanted to add this to something like a sign or a character or even just a generic text box that pops up at the bottom of the screen, we just need a new scene. I'll just throw this together really quickly. We'll call this player and add child node sprite. For the sprite, we'll just use the icon, which I really hate doing, but that's okay. We'll pull this down. Well, let's pull the whole thing. So I'm going to lock this node with this. Make sure that the object's children are not selectable. I'm going to click that so I can drag the whole object and not just the sprite. We'll put him right here. I'm going to give it a little script really quickly. So we have to load the dialog scene. Any any scene that's going to use the dialog, we have to load it. So we'll say var dialog equals preload. And then you can either grab it here because it pops up, or if it doesn't pop up or something, what I like to do is I come down here and grab the scene in the file system and just drag it up to the parentheses. I think that works pretty well. Dialog, and let's just say ready. We have to we have to create an instance of that dialog scene that we just preloaded. So var, we'll just call it d equals dialog dot instance. So nothing pops up when we do that because we haven't added the dialog as a child to the to the player, so add child D. Since I'm going to be spawning the dialog on another object like this, then I don't want the text to pop up with this, this orientation where the text is down here in the middle of the viewport instead of popping up in the corner. So I'm just gonna adjust that really quickly. I'm gonna grab the, the label and just move it. Let's just move it right here. And then let's try that. Okay, so the text appears above the player. So it's basically spawning right on it. And at this point, you would just have to play with you'd have to play with the different options you have available to you, not just with where the dialog is positioned. You can move it up, or you can keep it here, and then you could adjust the position yourself within the the object, which I think would work pretty well. You also have to play with the size of the dynamic font that you've created for your dialog. And the other thing, so within the label, you might also want to turn on some of these options. So we have auto wrap, which means whenever it hits the, whenever it hits the edge, it will put the text on the next line. So you'll see this, it says my first message. And I think the second message should wrap. Yeah, so that's auto wrapping. You can turn that on, but if you don't want that to happen and you actually want it to just expand out, then you need to come down here to the control node under grow direction I would do horizontal both at least, and then vertical you could do both as well, I guess in case it does wrap. But with this horizontal both on, that just means that when we hit the edge, it's going to make the label node larger, but we want to make sure that it expands kind of evenly so it keeps the text centered. So if I turn off auto wrap again, and I run the player one more time, my first message. So now it should it should keep the second message in the center, but it should expand out. Okay, I think that worked pretty well. It seems like it worked. If I wanted to change the message, I just have to call, since we have the instance, I just say d.messages equal, and then we just define a list just like we did in the node itself. So d message, I am the player. Can you hear me? Something like this. And then we run this. Messages, not message. So the messages work. I, it still bothers me. Let's move this up. So position dot y minus equal 100. Something like that. Okay, I'll end it here. I think that's, hopefully that's pretty helpful if you have any dialogue going on in your games. This can obviously be extended upon. You can add in some input from, you know, where the player can possibly respond or hit enter to advance the key. You just have to play around with some of the different values. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's informative. And if you did enjoy it or you learned something new, remember to hit the like and subscribe button. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.